Hi everyone, welcome back to my home studio. This is my day 41 of my uh, quarantine distraction videos that I've been making for my students since we're out and for all of you as a nice distraction of thinking about something else other than what's going on in the world and just having a nice distraction and thinking about doing something creatively in clay. So today's video is a hand building video and I use some shells that I picked up in Florida last year as uh, my mold actually for this. Um, I show how I made a, a mold out of clay and then I bisque fired that and then I used that negative mold and I made a set of shakers. So these are functional salt and pepper shakers. They have um, holes in the bottom where you can fill them and holes uh, where it will come out of the top. And um, yeah, it was fun. It was easy. So I hope you enjoy. You can use this exact same method with so many different things, you know, way beyond shells, but it's uh, a nice little um, technique to know and to have in your repertoire of things. So uh, please like and subscribe and uh, drop me any comments that you might have below and stay safe. Stay healthy and keep potting if you can. In order to create a shaker, which resembles a shell, I'm going to make molds of both halves of a shell. I'm making molds of both halves because if I only make a mold of one, it will be asymmetrical because these are mirror images of one another. So I have two pieces of clay that are relatively the same size. I will start by flattening it out and I really want to be aware of not having any defects in the uh, one side of it like I don't want to have creases or seams um, that would interfere with the texture of it so I'm just lightly doming it like this and then I'm ribbing because if I do have any sort of denting or texture, I wanna get rid of that. Okay, so that one's domed. Same thing with this. Both of these pieces are domed. They're just basically just flattened pieces, almost like a slab, but they're slightly cupped or domed and I ribbed the interior. Now, my idea is to put the clay on top of the shell, but if I press the clay just as it is, it will get stuck. So I'm using some cornstarch. Now cornstarch is organic, so it will burn off in the kiln. And because it's dry, it's going to leave a dry enough surface that the clay should not actually stick to the shell. Anytime you want to put uh, clay and press it up against an object that is not porous, like maybe glass, metal, plastic, uh, cornstarch is really good to help uh, be a barrier. Now I'm going to push this down and I'm kind of centering it on there. And I want to be very aware of not sliding it or moving it on the shell. And I'm just kind of pushing the edges down until the edges are touching the table. And I want to make sure that I'm really pressing on the outside. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but the clay thickness is probably three eighths of an inch to a half, half of an inch thick. Place it on there, press the clay, goes down to the table pressing all over the shell because I want to make sure that it's really getting that texture of the lines all the way across it. Now, I could leave this sit on here for a few hours to get it to dry. I just wanted to turn it over to see what that was looking like right there. I think I'll push it in a little bit closer. Do the same thing on this one. I feel like that's working pretty well. I could pop it out right now, but I, I think I'm just gonna let it sit for a couple hours just to stiffen up a little bit. So when I pick it up it, and take the shell out, it doesn't warp. And then I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit. Okay, I've let these sit for a couple hours and they firmed up a little bit. Now to get the shells out, I'm just going to gently press in the middle of the shell and kind of lift out on the outer edges. And that lifts it out nicely. Okay. Now this I'm ready to allow it to uh, just stiffen up a little bit, dry completely, and then I can get it fired in the bisque kiln. There we go. So look at that. That's really nice. I have two accompanying 
shells that will go together. All right, so I'm gonna fire these and then I'll use these bisque molds to create final uh, shells that will be shakers. Okay, I have two balls of clay that I have tried to smooth on the surface to make sure that I don't have any cracks or seams uh, that are visible in them. I'm going to take and put the smooth side down against the shell. I'm going to push really hard into it. Now, my goal is I really want to have the wall of the shell probably about a quarter of an inch thick because this does need to be hollow. And then I'll do the opposite shell. And remember, I had to do two different shell halves because these are not symmetrical. If I only did one, the shells wouldn't line up. It would be like having, you know, a right and a left, you would have two rights. For the next step, I want to trim off the excess clay. And you can use a lot of different tools for this. You could use a wire cutter. I'm just using a needle tool laying it flat against the edge of the clay and pulling it across. I'm going to let these sit for a little bit and then I'll come back when they're just slightly stiffer to work on them more. All right, these have been sitting up for a couple of hours and I can easily pop them out. And then the idea is I'm going to connect them and then clean up their edges. I'm carving out just a little bit more volume here because uh, it's a little thicker in that one spot and I want to have a little bit more volume to hold the salt. So I'm just kind of sculpting that a little bit, taking off a little bit of excess, cleaning up the edges. Okay, and this is going to uh, go together. And now for combining the two pieces together, I'm going to roll out a coil that's large enough to go over the opening of them both. One coil scored and both halves were already scored and slipped. Flattened in the coil. All right, I've placed uh, the scored coil onto the slipped surface and then I will take the other half, put it between, gently squish it together, and I can lift away the excess clay that kind of squished out. And next I'm cleaning up where the coil kind of squished out between them but I hold it too high, sorry. I'm using wooden tools, a sponge, a brush, anything like that to clean it up. And then I'm going to repeat making the next set of shells, same way, flattening the, the ball of clay in there, really making sure it's embedded, and then trimming off the extra with the needle tool. I already have a couple of videos on how to cut a stopper hole, um, but I'll kind of briefly explain that here uh, just as a, a guide. Um, I want to look for which side looks the best, if there's anything noticeable, and make sure that the best side is the top side. And I want to think about how it, it sits, so I'm probably going to put the stopper somewhere in this vicinity because I want it to kind of sit naturally on on the stopper area. Now um, stoppers come in different sizes. This just happens to be a number two um, but I want you to notice the way that it's made. It has an outer flange and it has an inner part that sticks on the inside. Now I'm going to trace the outer flange just as a guide but then I can't I can't cut the hole quite that large. The hole is going to be cut just a little bit smaller than that. So once I have my guidelines on there, you can use a regular knife or I'm just using an X-Acto. And I start from the middle and I gradually will whittle the hole. And you can see that it was probably helpful for me to have 
carved away some of the interior to make that wall just a little bit thinner so it wasn't quite so thick. I want the stopper to freely fit and right now it's just a little little too snug like it it should be the same size as the inner flange so it's getting closer so I want it to be this diameter that's the smaller flange not the outer flange okay that's looking pretty close and a little bit more down on the inside because the hole does look a little bit smaller as it went down farther. Okay, now that's looking, that's looking pretty good. Now I need to make a bevel at the entrance to the hole because I want to have the stopper actually kind of recessed up inside of the shaker. I don't want it to be protruding and sitting on the stopper, but I want the stopper to go up inside. It's just a little bit tight in one area. So I'm just really taking my time and trying to be as precise as I can and shave away very small amounts. Okay, there we go. So now that fits in. It's not protruding, okay? You can see that it's going to be flush with the uh, clay or a little bit up inside. And just tidying up. I had a couple little areas in there that wanted to make sure I didn't have any rough things in there. And there we go. Can take my finger, kind of clean that up. And that is the stopper hole. In order to do the holes for the salt and pepper to come out in the top, um, you can use a, a regular drill bit, drill bit, or in the case of this, I am using a salt and pepper drill. So it's really, it's just a drill bit with a handle. You can put whatever arrangement of holes you want to. There's no set number that has to be on a shaker. I usually end up by doing seven because if you've seen many of my videos, you know that I like geometry of snowflakes and I do a lot of six pointed things. And then I'll let that dry and then I'll just dust off any other stuff that I have on there. So there is a shaker that's ready to dry. And of course, take the stopper uh, out when you're allowing it to dry because you want the air circulation in there. And now to finish off the second one, the exact same way, cleaning up the edges, prepping a coil, scoring and slipping the edges, attaching the flattened coil between, and then cleaning up the area where the coil has squished out, then adding the stopper hole and the top holes. All right, and here are my two finished shakers. I hope you enjoyed that. It was actually very, very simple, very easy. I made the mold first out of clay, bisque fired that, and then used the negative mold to make my positive shakers. So please subscribe, drop me a like and a comment below if you have any questions, and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep potting if you can.